it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe get into this little soft pastel situation that I have going on mm. so I was in the mood to play with color today it's warming up outside spring is in the air Easter is around the corner and so many brands have launched these pastel themed palettes and I was intrigued, I was interested, but I don't want to pick up any of those palettes, right? I already have pastels in my collection that I know and love, so I went ahead and grabbed some of my favorite pastel palettes, okay? So we're playing with the pastel goth palette from Kat Von D before it became KVD Beauty and mainly the Menagerie Cosmetics Pastel Pop Palette. Mm-hmm. She's very cute. So I pulled out these two palettes to play and I'm also trying out various new makeup products in this video as I usually do with my get ready with me's. So we're trying out a new foundation product. This is from It Cosmetics. I know it's their CC Plus Nude Glow Color Correcting Medium Coverage Skin Tint. So this is a skincare infused skin tint product from It Cosmetics. I know they released an illuminating version of their CC cream, but this is slightly different it's supposed to be a little bit more lightweight and it has more skincare ingredients infused so we're testing this out in this video they sent these to me and I was surprised when I saw it show up so I'm like alright we're gonna try you out we're also trying out this new liquid blush from Laura Mercier this is their tinted moisturizer blush we're gonna see how that goes and I have a new concealer from Il Maquillage this is the Fuck I'm Flawless Concealer. <sighs> yeah, yeah, don't ask me anything. I just did a full video testing out their try it before you buy it system. I tried out the foundation, concealer, and primer. You just pay for shipping, you do a quiz on their website, it gives you a foundation match and also a concealer match, and you can try it at home for two weeks, 14 days, before you commit to paying full price, just to see if the formulations work for you, if the shade match is correct, and you can return whichever items don't work for you and pay for only those that you keep. So I have a video, I will link it over here so you can check it out. So we're trying out a new shade of the concealer because the shade that I got before was just not hitting for me. And I think that's it. So if you wanna see all these products in action and see me create this beautiful, colorful, pastel look, then stay tuned and I will talk to you soon. All right guys, so as usual, we're starting off with a clean, freshly washed face. And this time around, I already prepped my skin and filled in my eyebrows. For my moisturizer, I'm using this new one from Corez. It is their Poreless Skin Cream. It has salicylic acid and it's meant to smooth and balance the skin. And the name alone, Poreless Skin Cream, had me intrigued. So I went ahead and picked it up. It's a thicker, almost dense consistency, but it's not very emollient. Once you blend it out on the skin, it feels pretty lightweight. And I was initially nervous because just looking at it, it looks like it's gonna be too emollient, too hydrating on my skin. But it really does smooth out the skin and feel very comfortable. So we're gonna keep testing this out, but so far so good. I do like this on my oily skin. I also went in with an eye cream. This is from Pyong Kong Yul. It is a black tea time reverse eye cream. I got this off of YesStyle and my under eyes have been a little bit dry lately so I wanted to make sure they were hydrated and comfortable so I just tapped this under my eyes and blended it out. I like this eye cream because it is lightweight, very comfortable on the skin but hydrating at the same time. And YesStyle has quite a few eye creams that you can try out. K-Beauty brands, they are stellar when it comes to getting skincare just right. But again, YesStyle has so many brands to choose from so if you were curious and you wanted to try out some k-beauty brands definitely check it out but this eye cream very comfortable and I've been enjoying it now I picked up this new beauty tool from Sephora it is one of the Jade Rollin tools and oh my god, I love the feel of these tools on my skin. I have been using these tools more and more because they kind of just feel soothing and relaxing and calming and they also have a cooling effect and you can apply them under your eyes. Again, my skin has been feeling a little bit drier lately. It's still very oily, 
but when I wash my face I just have a little bit of dryness so I do have to hydrate and adding these tools into my skincare routine has just elevated the soothing and relaxing feel on my skin it doesn't necessarily change the efficacy of the skincare products but it just makes me feel good so definitely like this tool if you're interested in checking it out Sephora is having a sale these are gonna be 30% off I ended up getting this for 30% off during some some, like spur of the moment sale that Sephora had and I am so glad I picked it up. Alright I also prepped my eyelids and I am using Old Faithful Hair. This is from Kat Von D. It is their Priming Correct High Voltage Eye Primer. Long discontinued but I love this eye primer for when I'm going in with colorful shades or pastel shades because it helps to really hold on to the pigment and helps the colors really pop on my skin. So I just blended that all over my eyelids. It's just a light beige base and again it will help my eyeshadows to really pop since we're going in with colorful pastel shades. Speaking of Kat Von D because this was before the rebrand alright so I still have these products in my collection. We have the pastel goth palette that I may pull in for a couple of shades. This is long discontinued, but I mean, it was so good, it was so fun. I really liked this when it came out, and I still enjoy it when I'm looking for that kind of pastel look. But the main palette that we're going in with is from Menagerie Cosmetics, one of my favorite indie brands for eyeshadows. This is the Pastel Pop Palette. It is still available and you can also get all these shades as singles on their website so if you just wanted to try out a couple of the shades you can do so without having to buy the entire palette but I like the palette so I'm glad to have it in my collection and it's a great palette for pastel shades as well so this is our main palette but we may pull in from the Kat Von D one all right I'm not sure what we're gonna do but let's just let's just go for it. Let me start out with the wide shade which is Saddleback and we'll pop that on the inner tear duct using a refer number 12 domed smudger brush this brush is perfect for getting on this inner tear duct area it is larger than other pencil brushes and i find the rounded shape just to be ideal for packing on color on this inner tear duct space and that white is pigmented girl that is good all right let me try to blend out some of the edge so it's not a harsh line now i recently got this set of brushes from bk beauty this is the bk beauty times angie hot and flashy set i think we're gonna probably try out some of the smaller blender brushes for some precision work in this look but We'll see, we're gonna test them out. I already have like a couple of their brushes that I really enjoy and love. So we're gonna see about this set. Let's go in with the yellow shade, which is Sunbathe. And I'm using a BH Cosmetics number five brush. This is similar to their V5 brush. The V5 is just the vegan version. I don't know what the difference is since both bristles are synthetic. That would to me translate as vegan, but who am I? I'm just gonna blend that shade on the inner crease line to give a nice wash of color. That is for sure giving me very pastel yellow so I'm going to grab the star shade which is a brighter yellow from the Kat Von D palette I remember when this palette launched the Kat Von D one people are like this is not really a pastel palette because the colors were a little bit more intense and it's true because the Menagerie palette is definitely a pastel. Ooh, this brush is comfortable. This is the BK Beauty A502 brush. It's a small blending brush and it's very comfortable. And again, I'm using it for like a precise application of the deeper yellow because I'm concentrating that a little bit further down on the crease line. So this yellow, even though it doesn't look pastel in the palette, on my skin tone and on deeper skin tones it would translate as pastel so even though on lighter skin tones it may be a little bolder and i understand that it didn't necessarily read as pastel on deeper complexions it still did so i was happy with it let's do a little bit of green so i'm going to grab flipper from the menagerie palette same bk beauty brush and we're going to apply that to the center crease line using sweeping motions 
that is a good color too. The matte shades from Menagerie Cosmetics are some of my favorites. I think they do a pretty good job and for this pastel palette, it's just one of my favorites. If you're looking for a pastel palette, there are not many on the market, but this one definitely hits it all the way out the park. It's so good. So that green, yeah, look how pretty that is. It definitely reads pastel, but it's darkening up just a little bit on that stickier base that I have down, but still pastel. Now let's grab Ice Worm. This one is like a pastel teal instead of a pastel green. Ooh, yes. I really like this BK Beauty brush. It has the right size for precise application of color but it also has longer bristles so you can use it for blending. That's nice. Oh God, you can definitely see the difference between the green and the teal shade from Menagerie. That's good. Let me just grab a clean blending brush. This is from Sonia G. It's the Blender Pro brush. Now, I don't know if you guys have watched, it's my top 25 plus most used brushes. And someone mentioned this brush in my comments. They're like, oh, this brush definitely should be on your list. And I'm like, mm -mm, that video is covering the brushes that I use the most. And this brush, even though it's a nice blending brush, I don't use it as much as my other brushes. It's cute, like don't get me wrong, but I just don't use it. And that video was about the brushes that I use the most. So good brush, just not my most used. All right, now I'm gonna grab the blue shade Aquatic and I'm grabbing a Refer 32 brush, which is a flat top angled brush, which is a unique brush in my collection, but it's great for like stamping color down on that outer V. Like look how great that just puts the color down. I'm not using it to blend. I'm just pressing the color down so I can get the pigmentation that I'm going for without doing much else. Now I'll clean off the brush and just go around the edge. It can still be used for blending. It's not just for stamping down color. It can still be used for blending. So if you just go with tapping motions back and forth, it will blend out the edge of the color as well. Now I'm gonna go in with Ice Cap, which is the Periwinkle shade. And we're using the same Refer 32 brush and we're gonna place that and next to the sky blue. That is a pretty color. Oh my God, that is such a pretty color. I'm telling you, Menagerie did so well with this palette. I am still very impressed by it, even though it's an older palette. And I know people move on quickly, but some of these older palettes are still hitting. Don't sleep on them. So if you were looking for a pastel palette, you know, a lot of pastels have been coming out recently because of, you know, spring and the warmer weather. And it seems to be a trend with these new makeup palette releases. If you really want a good pastel palette, go with the Menagerie one. I don't think you'll be disappointed. If you were looking for pastel shimmers though, they don't have that. But if you were looking for matte shades, this is the way to go, okay? Look at that. Now I'm gonna grab the pink shade, which is Cuddle. This one doesn't read as pastel. Ah! I wanted this to be a little bit more pastel, but it's so pretty though. All right, we'll keep it. Some of that definitely just got in my eye. Uh-uh, woo child. But we're gonna just pack that pink on the rest of the lid where we have nothing else. Ooh, as you blend it out, it lightens up just a bit. But I mean, she's intense if you really pack her on. Like, woo chile. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let me grab a little bit more and what I'm going to do is mix in some of the white just to make it a little bit more pastel. So the thing about this palette is it has a black and a white shade at the bottom and you're meant to mix the shades. Now, I don't know with that black, like that's a lot to mix in. Not many people can mix a black and a pastel and get a deeper pastel or a deeper color. It's just, ooh, that's gonna be more difficult, but you can definitely mix the white in to make the shades a little bit more pastel. By the way, this is a Sonia G Worker Pro brush. So I was able to get a little bit of a lighter pink mixing the white in, and I think that, yeah, that's perfect. And let me blend in the edge of the periwinkle just to make sure 
everything is seamless yes now to deepen up the outer crease let's use doom from the kat von d palette this is a richer blue a more intense blue than the pastel blue that we have down and i'm using the same blender pro that we used before to help blend in that outer v see how that looks it adds a little bit of depth and dimension but it doesn't change the overall color that we have going on and i don't want to necessarily darken up this look like i always do with other looks i want to keep it light and airy so add in this blue i think should yeah i think that should suffice all right let me clean this up just a bit on this outer edge I want to go in, hmm, we'll use the peachy tones on the lower lash line, I think. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. But let me pull back just a bit. Mm -hmm. Let me do a little brow highlight. This is just my usual light beige shade. This is the Heart Shape Cookie from Sugar Pill. I don't even know if Sugar Pill still makes this shade. I think it was limited edition, but I don't know what Sugar Pill is doing these days anyway. They have released products here or there, but nothing that catches my eye, if I'm honest with you. And there's something kind of sketchy about the owner, Shrinkle. She... I don't know. Like, during the Black Lives Matters um, movement, she was just being really sketched, so I don't even want to support the brand if I'm honest with you. You know how brands will just do things that just rub you the wrong way and then you just cut them off and you don't even realize sometimes that you're cutting them off? Like I didn't even realize that I was cutting sugar pill off, but I did. But just blended out the edge and gave myself a little bit of highlight. All right. Let's do some face makeup. So we already have moisturizer on and I think my skin, my skin, yeah, it feels very hydrated. It definitely is giving me a little bit more than I would normally be comfortable with given my oily skin. So I'm a little bit nervous and we're going in with a glowy foundation. I know, I don't know that it's necessarily a glowy foundation. So this is from It Cosmetics. I know, right? It Cosmetics who? All right. So they sent me their new CC Plus Nude Glow Color Correcting Medium Coverage Skin Tint Plus Brightening Glow Serum Plus Broad Spectrum SPF 40. That's a lot. But it's their CC Plus Nude Glow Foundation. And I believe this has lighter coverage than their regular CC cream, but it's not as glowy as their CC. CC Illumination Cream. So it's just supposed to be like a serum foundation and a lot of brands are coming out with skincare based um, skin tints now like foundations with skincare benefits. Let me see what this says. So it has niacinamide which helps visibly brighten skin, smooths skin's texture and reduces the look of dark spots and large pores. Hyaluronic acid which immediately visibly plumps and hydrates skin and green tea extract which protects against environmental aggressors for healthier looking skin. It's supposed to be buildable and it's supposed to give an immediate healthy glow. So that's why I'm a little bit nervous because it says glow and I'm like, I don't want to glow. Thank you so much. So they sent me three shades. I'll pop in the swatches. I have rich, tan rich and rich honey and the shades go up in depth and they have more of a gray leaning neutral undertone which actually works out for my skin tone, believe it or not. I'm going to go in with the deeper shade they sent, which is Rich Honey. This is actually, believe it or not, a pretty decent skin match. The shade Tan Rich is also a pretty decent shade, but it's very, very neutral. It's very gray. The Rich Honey has a little bit more of a warm undertone. Look at this brush, guys. This is the Marc Jacobs The Face 2 brush. It used to be one of my go-to foundation brushes, but I haven't been using it lately, and I did a brush declutter recently. What is this little cross? Ah! I did a brush declutter recently where I went through my entire collection of brushes, got rid of brushes that I was no longer using, but one of the benefits of going through that collection is that I found brushes that I used to love that I have not been using. So this is one of them and it's still such a great brush. Oh my God. Ooh, okay, okay now. 
The CC Cream from IT Cosmetics, I used to love it, but the shades just didn't seem to work well for me. They've expanded the shade range, but I think they can still do much better. I know with higher SPF, you tend to get like a gray cast, so it's a little bit tricky with the undertones, but I think they can still do better. And this shade, look at it. It's a good shade match for me. And I can also mix in the tan rich shade to get a little bit more of a neutral undertone. But I definitely think this shade works. And it is giving me, mmm, it is giving me a medium coverage, I think. Let's see if it's as buildable as they say. I'll put a little bit more. I don't wanna put too much, okay? But I just wanna see if it builds at all the coverage. Ooh. Yeah, I definitely, oh, come in, come in, come in, come in so you can see what I'm seeing. Definitely glowy, right? And I mean, I expected it to be glowy, but it's definitely building for a CC coverage product. And with one, again, with such high SPF, I didn't know what to expect, but this is applying and blending and building pretty well. Let me put a little on my nose. Ooh, I think I have a pimple on my nose. Yeah, that hurt a little bit. Uh <laughs> You ever have those pimples that are hidden? They're coming along, but they're under the skin, so they're not at the surface, but you feel, you feel the little achy feeling. You know that feeling. That actually looks nice. It's very glowy, though. This is moist. This is very <laughs> moist. Oh my God, so hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and green tea extract. Decent ingredients, a lot of people love their niacinamide and it definitely plumps and adds hydration to the skin along with that hyaluronic acid. So, she is shiny. She is very shiny, but I do like the coverage. This is pretty. I like this because I can use this as an SPF. That is nice. I do like it, I just don't like how glowy I am, okay? Now I'm going to grab an Il Maquillage Concealer. This is their Fuck I'm Flawless Concealer. Don't ask me why they, why, why? Anyway, this is shade 14.5. So I recently did a video where I tried out Il Maquillage. I tried out their foundation match system on their website, which is what I really wanted to test out and I grab the foundation, the concealer, their primer. I also have their foundation brush. So I tried it out, but the concealer match that they gave me, I was just like, oh, hell no. It was shade number nine. This is 14.5, okay? This is much better for me. This is what I'm looking for from a concealer. I don't want a light concealer on my under eyes. I don't do that, that's not my preference. I know a lot of people do like a lighter concealer. And the funny thing is, the models that they were using, the influencers that were showcasing this shade are much deeper than me, like rich skin tones. And I'm like, okay, so I see what you're doing here. You go for a lighter shade. So that's why you matched me with number nine. It was bad. But I returned the shade, so you can try out the system, and I'll link my video over here so you can check it out. So you can try out the system for 14 days, see if you have the right match of the foundation and the concealer, see if the formulations work for you, and then if you're not happy with anything, return it. And I'm like, all right, perfect. So I returned it, wasn't charged, and then they sent me an email that said, hey, we're sorry to see you go. And they sent me a coupon for like $30 off a of future purchase just to make up for whatever they thought they did wrong. Which I mean, I guess they matched me wrong with the foundation shade. Oh, I see the pimple now. Do you see it? That is about to be a beast. Those pimples are so painful. So they're like, oh, you know, here's $30 off your next purchase. And I'm like, $30? Okay. So I went ahead and grabbed a better shade match for the concealer. Now, that shade is much better. I do like the formulation. It feels very soft and hydrating under the eyes. I say soft, but it's really the applicator that was really soft. The applicator was very comfortable. Ooh, yes. That pimple though. I'm going over my skin with this dry sponge just to absorb some of that illumination, that glow from the CC cream. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel heavy or sticky on the skin. 
it doesn't feel like a heavy duty sunscreen which is good but then again I didn't apply as much of it as I would a regular sunscreen but it doesn't feel sticky even though it's so glowy it feels pretty nice on the skin it doesn't feel heavy or anything I like the finish of it too it's pretty and I think I got decent coverage and I also like that concealer but the concealer is like $31 and other concealers on the market are like 20 something dollars so I don't know that I would necessarily recommend the concealer if you wanted to try it out I don't think it's bad just make sure you pick the proper shade for you and your preferences if you like a lighter concealer then you know they'll match you that way but if you're like me and you like one that matches your skin tone then maybe just make sure you go up in shade but that's pretty I do like that all right let me set my under eyes because every concealer creases on me it's not even a question I don't have to ask anybody anything it is going to crease so let me just set that with my Patrick Star powder have you guys tried this powder out what do you think about it I personally like it I got the small size this is the translucent shade he also has a deep version. The deep is a little bit too dark for me. I definitely wouldn't use it under the eyes, but I could use it all over the skin. But what do you think about this powder? I think one person said that they tried it before and they didn't like it. And I know my girl Demi mentioned that she likes the Pat McGrath powder, which I also love a lot too, but I really like this Patrick Star powder for under my eyes. It just works so well. I don't have much else that's new right now, so I'm just going to go in with my gel contour from KVD Beauty. So no longer Kat Von D, now we're going to the KVD side of things and applying a little bit of a brontour. This is the shade medium cool 60. I recently picked this shade up because I wanted a cool tone option. I have the warm tone version as well which works really well if I'm going for a warmer look on my skin but with this foundation being as cool tone as it is I think we should go in with a more cool tone bronzer and I applied this a little bit higher on my jawline than I usually do to give a lift to my skin. So you've probably seen this kind of application done now on Instagram and TikTok where you apply your contour a little bit higher to give a more lifted sculpted look and I think it definitely works. So, ooh, yons, okay? Now I have this new liquid blush from Laura Mercier. It's a tinted moisturizer blush and I was intrigued. I heard tinted moisturizer blush. I'm like, get me in there. I want to try it. I have the shade Sun Drenched. I'm a little bit nervous about this because I already tried it out, right? And it dries really quickly. It's kind of intense and it's hard to control without it looking patchy. So I'm picking this up on my Smashbox Cream Cheek Brush and I'm just pouncing it out on my skin. I tapped it out on my, listen, okay, my little palette here before I applied it to my skin because like I said, it's a little bit difficult to control. So I don't wanna just go directly in on my skin. I have more of an issue with liquid products like this. They're a little bit harder to control than like a cream blush. But this, mm, I don't know, like it dries really nicely on the skin. So if you have oily skin and you're afraid of like these really dewy gel and liquid blushes, maybe this will be one for you to test out. But it's $28. It's a little pricey and it's a little trickier to work with. Like I said, I have to be a little bit more careful. But once it dries down, it like dries down, okay? And it's pretty, it really does give a great look to the skin. It's just that if you do it wrong, it's not going to translate well on the skin. So I'm just trying it now to see if maybe I got a better hang of it. Because I think having a tinted moisturizer blush, like why didn't other brands think of this before? I think that is such a great idea. All right, let's finish up the eyes, all right? I'm going to go to the Kat Von D palette and pick up the shade Dope that I think will work a little bit better than the Periwinkle that we have in the Menagerie palette. 
Yes. You're probably like, why is she using that sponge? So normally I hold my skin taut. If I use my finger right now, it will probably leave a little bit of an indentation on the products that we have on the skin, like the foundation and the blush and all that, because they're very moist. So I don't want to leave behind fingerprints. So that's why I'm using this sponge. This is from Makeup Forever. It was included in their um, loose setting powder, but you can get a sponge like this anywhere on the market, I am very sure of it. And then I'll use Fishy from the Menagerie palette. That name sounds nasty as hell. Fishy? Wow. <laughs> what? I know they're using the seal pup as like their mascot for this, but Fishy? <laughs> fishy sound like you need to get that checked out, mamas. Uh-uh. What? No. This is not giving me as much punch as I want. Let's try Clementine from the Kat Von D palette then. I mean, Clementine sounds a lot more palatable than fishy. I mean, it gives a little bit more color, but not much. Let's just, yeah, that's fine. It's fine, I'll leave it alone. That's enough, okay. Let's go ahead and do mascara. I don't have a new one, so I'm just gonna do mascara, pop on lashes, and I will be back to finish up the rest of the look. So we are back and I finished up the eyes with mascara, a pair of lashes, and blue eyeliner on my waterline. I'm using the Makeup by Mario Master Pigment Pro Pencil in the shade Rich Blue. I love these pencils, they're so good. So I applied that on my lower waterline and I realized that I didn't set my foundation with powder at all. So here you have the CC cream, very dewy, but it hasn't been set and I think my skin looks pretty good. If I do say so myself. Huh, interesting. But I am going to set my face because I'm gonna get greasy and I don't need any of that in my life, okay? Let's just use any old powder. This is from Urban Decay. It is their all nighter setting powder. And I'm just going to pounce that all over my skin. Oh my god, my nose still hurts. <laughs> Guys, that pimple is about to ruin my day. I don't like that, but mm, mm. using one of my Fude brushes, okay? Again, I'm going through my brushes and I'm pulling out brushes that I kind of haven't been using and I do love, so I need to get some use out of them. So skin is done. Ooh, those kids are loud. They're outside in the playground area. Wow, and the playground area is like all the way over there. So I don't know if you can hear them, but they are loud right now. All right, I think the cheeks are good, but I want to go in with a little bit of a highlighter bomb. I just got this from Patrick Ta. It is for face and body, but I wanna see how this looks on the cheeks. So this is an all over glow bomb in She's on Vacation. Not gonna lie, she looks oily and greasy and I'm not sure how to feel about that. But we're gonna try it anyway. What's that smell? Mmm, smells nice. So we're gonna pop that on the high points of my cheeks. Ooh, it's definitely like a greasier formula. Ew, ooh, 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 I'm trying to like not get the greasy stuff, <laughs> but it's greasy, it's a little bit, yeah. You see how glowy that is? That's not bad if you go for that glowy look. I prefer a matte finish to my cheeks, but I do get into like these more glossy cheeks as well for highlighting. Let me see how it would look if I go over it with my sponge. Hmm, I feel like it's lifting. Yeah, it's definitely lifting the product under it. Yeah, so no, no, no go. Maybe I'll use this on like my decollete for going out, but for now, it's lifting my, yeah, it lifted my cheek product. So now I'm gonna need to go in with something else on my cheeks. I'm not gonna go back in with the Laura Mercier product. I'm gonna go in with a cream blush. This is from LIS Beauty. This is one of their new shades. This is Humble, which is a bubblegum pink shade. And I'm just gonna pop that on my cheeks. Man, these kids are loud. But you know what? The weather is nice 
Enjoy it, children! These cream blushes are really pretty, so I definitely think this is one of my favorite formulas of cream blush. They apply really well, they dry down nicely, and they are also long wearing, so I definitely do like them. I had such a bad experience with the marketing team from LYS, I might do a little bit of a story time rant about that, but mm, the products still fierce loving it and for the lips i'm just going to go in with a patrick ta lip gloss this is the major volume plumping lip gloss and the shade i have is two cc's isn't two cc's for breast implants right oh let me find out patrick over here speaking of pr okay patrick ta's team reached out to me that's how i got this face and body balm uh, yeah, just keep that to the body, but they sent me a link that will get you guys free shipping if you make a purchase through their website. So I will link the website down below in case you wanted to pick any of these up. But the Sephora sale is coming up, so maybe hold off on that. But Patrick Ta does have friends and family sales from time to time as well. So I will link that down below. But here you have it. Here is the final... Woo, child nearly fell. Here is the final look. And I am feeling very spring. I am feeling pastel and I am loving it. Do you like my little top hair? This is from Kohl's. I, I have on sweats with it. But yeah, here's the top and here are my sweats. But it's a cute little... I mean, it's a little Stepford Wives. It's a little having a picnic in the park. But my makeup is still killing the game. So I am definitely loving it. Let's go ahead and talk about the palettes. Starting out with the eyeshadow palettes. Doesn't make any sense I talk about the Kat Von D Pastel Goth palette. It's no longer available, but I love that palette. If you have it in your collection, maybe pull it out. The Menagerie Cosmetics Pastel Pop Palette. I really like this palette as a pastel palette. If you were on the market for a pastel palette, mind you, it's all matte, but the mattes are fantastic. I mean, Look at this eyeshadow. I am loving it. I didn't even zoom in so you could see it. So, I mean, come on. Isn't that pretty? These shades applied and blended really well. They gave me that pastel vibe with a little bit of oomph. And pff, can't say enough. Look at this cheek, though. That glowy cheek. So this is from the LYS product. I mean, we also use the Patrick Ta, so a little bit of the glow would come from that. But the LYS Satin Cheek um, Cream Products, definitely love them, just didn't like the marketing team. And that has nothing to do with the owner. It's all about how they're doing their marketing, whatever, okay? So love the LYS product. But the Laura Mercier one, I don't know, like these are pricey, okay? These are $28 and it did okay, but it didn't do that much better than any other liquid cheek product that I've tried out. So... I would say skip these unless you really truly want to try them out you can skip these and they're not the easiest to work with and when they dry down they can kind of be difficult to blend and if you're blending while they're drying down you're gonna end up with patchiness so skip these these you can skip I don't think those are worth it the Patrick Ta lip gloss I love this lip gloss it definitely has this cooling feel into it and it smells like bubble tape you know that bubble gum in a tape that's what it smells like and I love it. I think they use cinnamon for the plumping effect. It smells really great. I don't know how it tastes. Does it taste? Ooh, child! I don't really taste anything, but it smells really good. I like the smell of it. Maybe I shouldn't have licked that. Now my tongue's gonna get numb? I don't know. Foundation. The IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow. I am pleasantly surprised. I was expecting this to just be way too glowy, way too dewy, because it says nude glow, and I'm like, ugh, I don't want any glow on my skin. But this looks really good. Even before I set it with powder, it still looked really healthy and glowy on my skin without being overwhelming. And a lot of these glowy foundations on the market can get really, really glowy, okay? But this was nice. After I patted it down with my dry sponge, it absorbed some of that glowiness and left behind a nice finish. It's a nice medium coverage. I like the finish. Well, I don't love the finish of it because it's a little bit oily. But I like how it looks with powder on it. Let me just get rid of some of this glow, child. All right. When in doubt, go over your face with a dry sponge to absorb some of that glowiness. You can also use it to blot. Just putting that out there. But, like, it looks good on my skin. The shade match is also pretty good. Like, look at that. 
right? This is Rich Honey. And I think if you are looking for an SPF rich foundation product or like a skin tint with solid SPF, I think this is a good one. It has SPF 40 and it's broad spectrum. So UVA and UVB. I think this is pretty great. I didn't know what to expect, honestly, and I was pleasantly surprised. So definitely kudos to them for that. The moisturizer from Coraz. I expected this to be a little bit more mattifying. It's not, but I do like the texture of it, so I'll continue to use it, but it's not like a must have for me. The massaging tool from Sephora, I really like this. And then of course the under eye cream. The concealer from Il Maquillage. I think it's overpriced, but it's a nice concealer. So if you wanted to test out their system, Maybe if you can get a discount on it, try it out. I mean, there's so many concealers on the market these days and this one being a higher price point, I don't feel like it blows me away enough for me to say run out and get it. But if you wanted to try it, I don't think you'd be disappointed. Just make sure you kind of navigate that shade range. Pick a shade based on your preferences and not necessarily what they recommend for you because the shade they recommended for me terrible it was just way too light and then last up is a product that i already tried in a couple of videos this is the kvd modcon gel bronzer love these can't say enough about them so all in all i think this turned out pretty well i love most of the products that we tried out there are a couple of duds that i would avoid but overall i think the look turned out great let me know what you think is this given you spring is it i really love it all right but I'm going to leave all the products mentioned and used down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick them up. If those links have an asterisk next to them, that indicates that it is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. It's a great way to support the channel because it doesn't change the sale price, but it gives me a little bit of a kickback for putting you on. So if you do shop using my links, thank you so, so much because it does help me to put right back into the content. But if you're not comfortable with that, it's fine. Shop how you normally shop, no must, no fuss. But I'm still happy you're here watching. Feel free to leave a comment, a thumbs up, letting me know you enjoyed the video because that's also a great way to show your support for the channel. And I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you should be following me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys.